and we'll get going. How are we doing today? Good. Awesome. 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 Hey, I saw some really cool stuff happen yesterday. Um, Rose, tell us everything, please. Yes. Yeah, so uh, yesterday I did a, I, I went on to um, the Facebook group Real Estate Mastermind and did a, I'm assuming you're talking about this, I did a yep. live video on there of me cold calling um, and for only two hours, in that two hours, I got over 7,000 viewers. Um, right now, it's at 10,000. Um, over 300 people that were commenting while I was live. Um, over 250 likes or reactions. Um, and it was a lot. It was a bigger turnout than I expected it to be. So, uh, and I still got people blowing up my phone about it from yesterday, like new agents from across the country that said, like, I've never seen anybody cold call before. This was so amazing. Thank you so much. And uh, now that, that I saw awesome. that. Did you record that, it? Yeah, it's recorded. It's um. What's the name of the mastermind, Rose? It's real. It's called a real estate mastermind. Real estate mastermind. Yeah. So just think about all the lives you changed yesterday. Do you know that there is probably um, there is probably a lot. I mean, lots and lots of agents that have been paralyzed and not able to make calls for whatever reason it is that you inspired and they're probably helping families that need help right now. Come on, have a seat. Yeah. Right. The other thing um, I, I think is really cool is that you've gotten, uh, when we talked yesterday, it was like around 50 friend requests. So yeah. people from all over the country are reaching out to you to forge a relationship to possibly be referral partners. Yeah, and I've already got messages that have said like, um, if I have a referral for Georgia, I already know who to come to now. Like, like you're going to be my agent in Georgia. Um, I love that. So we talked a little bit yesterday and Rose and I is one-on-one -on -one about building an agent database. Now, if you don't have a buyer and seller database or a prospect database, that is by far and away the bigger priority. But as you're building your business, you want to also consider building your, your database of agents, right? Agents are your are your best friend in this business, right? They can make a transaction um, a complete disaster or they can make a transaction incredibly easy, right? Um, when you think about this, let's just say Rose has a, has a, uh, a, a person in, in every, let's just say it's every state across the country and they are purposefully uh, trying to support the business of Rose in Metro Atlanta. What if each of them sent her one deal each year? Do you think people are moving to Atlanta? Yeah, absolutely. I think so too. I think so too. So what if Rose got one referral? What if Rose got one referral from half of them every year? There's her 25 deals right there. Okay. So I think, um, I just want to publicly say that I think that is awesome. And I got to tell you, I'm not positive I would, would do that. So I think that takes a lot of guts. And I think I am so proud. Oh, my gosh. I feel like, I feel like a proud grandfather or something. You can, all... In the video, I was literally, I held my hand up and I was shaking like this because I was calling in front of, I had 350 people watching at one time. And I was cold calling in front of them. And I was like, oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end, the diminished. It was great. Yeah. I mean, like, you, like we've always said, you're just talking to people, right? You're not trying to sell VCRs. You're just trying to see if people need help. Mm -hmm. Right? And we got tons of resources to help people. So why not use them to help to, to do the right thing? And um, great, great job. What, else, what Did you want to share something else? Yeah, I was going to say, and the fact that I was so scared at the beginning of the video versus towards the end of the video where I kept saying like, oh, 20 more minutes, 20 more minutes, and then 20 minutes would pass. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to get off 20 more minutes. Um, that is like proof that you can get over your fear 
by doing the scariest thing possible. Like that was terrifying for me. And I didn't, I didn't back out. I didn't quit. I kept going. And then that fear just got smaller. So if you don't do the scariest thing, then you're not going to get over that fear. Ah, love it. Yeah, that is so true. I have been in there myself with them for a few weeks now. And, um, yeah, I was very scared at first, but I'm proud of myself for breaking through that barrier of fear of uh, calling random people you don't know. And But, th- you know, the script that, that, you know, they have is so, so easy and it's not kind of threatening. It's just really, you're just trying to help people. So, you know, it's really not that bad. Let's jump into that. You guys mind doing a quick role play? I'm going to, um, let's do Andrew, I'll do one with you. And Rose, I'll do one with you if you're open to it. Well, do one with her because I don't have any of my stuff with me right this second. And I'm just about to walk out the door. All right, let's start with, uh, let's start with Rose. Then we'll go to Alma, okay? So um, I'll be the person that's being called. Rose, you be the agent. And I just want you to see how easy a conversation could could begin and, and flow into something that could create a, you know, a long-term prospect or even a short-term prospect. Okay, awesome. All right, All right ring, ring. Hello? Hey, Bill? Yeah, this is Bill. Hey, Bill, this is Rose Harrison with Keller Williams. How are you? Oh, hey, Rose. What can hey. I do? What can yeah. I yeah, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but there was a property that just sold down the road. And I was wondering if there's anything that I could do for you in regards to buying or selling real estate. Uh, no, no, I'm good. I appreciate the, 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 the notice about the sale, but um, I'm real happy where I am. Um, what did it sell for? Yeah, no, uh, it actually sold for about 260. Um, but you know, that's perfectly fine that you're not ready to do anything right now. I totally get that. Um, I do have one last question before we go. Is there an agent that you would use if you ever needed anything? Um, not really. No, the last agent that I used was, uh, was, was not so great. So I'd probably be open to interviewing other agents if I had a question. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that. I'm sorry that the last agent didn't work out, but, um, Bill, if you ever need anything at all, even if it's not real estate related, I love meeting new people. Um, if I can help you in any way, this is my cell phone number. Would it be okay if I stayed in touch? Uh, yeah. You want to like maybe text me or something so we can have a, a, a texting, you know, um, stream going back and forth if we ever. Yeah. Need yeah. Is this your cell phone number? Yeah. This is my cell. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can shoot you a text um, with some of my information on it and uh, we can communicate that way if you prefer. Um, cool. I really... so are you going to like put me on some kind of newsletter or something like that? Oh no, no, I'm not going to do that. What Really what I want to do is just build a relationship with you because like I said, I love meeting new people. Um, call you, check up on you. I And I know that you're not ready to buy anything right now, but I would rather you have me and not need me than to need me and not have me. Does that sound good? Yeah, I think that's a, uh, I like that line. Yeah, that sounds great. All right. Awesome. Well, I super appreciate you picking up the phone today, Bill. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Beautiful. All right. Great job, Rose. So let's do a little, um, let's do a little housekeeping on that call. So yeah. what happens now? Now I, you, you record that you had a contact, you um, put the data in a, in a safe place in, in, in a, so that it will very shortly, not during working hours and definitely not during lead generation time blocks, <laughs> be entered into the database, right? Mm-hmm. And then what is your plan to communicate with that person in the future? How frequently do you plan on touching that person? Every 30 days every 30 days okay yeah and it's usually just a quick phone call where i just say hey uh how are you doing is there anything that i can do for you uh they might say yes they might say no um and then i just say well if you ever do need anything feel free to reach out in the meantime hope you have a great day and i'll talk to you next time all right let's talk about messages for a second are you dropping a message for the people that don't pick up yeah, I'm, I'm dropping a voicemail. Um, it's just my name with Keller Williams 
and then my cell phone number. Um, Cause I found that if you talk about why you're calling, they're not going to call you back. Right. No. I think it's even, especially for a, what is essentially a pretty cold lead at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I didn't really express any interest in doing anything real estate related. Although I did tell you, I didn't have a, a, a point person basically. Right. So I think that a, a good strategy in the future for, for future follow-ups would be something to the effect of, you know, Hey, it's Rose Harrison with Keller Williams. Um, we talked about uh, a month ago. I just wanted to check in. No need to call me back unless you need something. Just was thinking about you today and wanted to uh, make myself available. Hope you're having a great holiday season. Bye. Right. So we talked about this a couple of weeks ago when you call somebody and you and particularly if they're not expecting your call and you say something to the effect of please call me or call me, you're basically giving them a new job and they didn't even want the call. They definitely don't want the call and a job. Right. Yeah. And so I think it's good to kind of take the pressure off of them to some degree, to, particularly if it's um, just more of a casual care call. To say, you know, no need to call me back. I'm sure you're busy uh, unless you have a question or there's something I can do to help you. Just was thinking about you around the holidays. Um, hope you and the family are doing well. I'll speak to you in the new year or something like that. Right. So then the pressure to, to, to um, you know, fit in one more call back is, is, has been relieved. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Awesome. All right. Alma, your turn. Okay, I'm driving, and don't roast me too much because, you know, I just started doing this. <laughs> I know. I, was, I, I wasn't so bad with Rose, was I? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I got a couple things up my sleeve. Go ahead. Oh, Lord. Okay. You're, ring, you're ring. The, I, I'm the, the, yeah, yeah I got you. Okay. I'm the recipient. Ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Mr. Bill. That's me. How can I help you? Hi, this is Alma from Keller Williams Realty. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. I'm good. What's going on, Alma? How can I help you? Well, thank you so much for answering. And I will be really quick in here. I just wanted to uh, say that there we've seen a lot of market activity in your area. And I'm just following up to see if there's anything uh, in the world when it comes to real estate I could do to help you today or in the future. Uh, you know what? I, I'm glad you called, Alma, because I, I don't have a, a, a buying or a selling need right now, but I was thinking about um, looking into refinancing my home. Do you know any real uh, any loan officers that maybe you would recommend? I could absolutely help you with that. And um, yes, uh, I, I could send you some. Uh, uh, OK, <laughs> you're doing great. Keep it going. Um, I could send you some recommendations and you can pick uh, and by yourself. So, so can I give you some feedback on that? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. So absolutely. Um, we work all the time. Myself and my home buyers work all the time with several lenders that I highly trust and highly okay. recommend. Let me make sure that I have all of your contact information and I'll introduce you uh, by three way text or through three way email to those mortgage professionals, and there's probably a good likelihood that they could save you money. Oh, that's perfect. Um, let, me, let me confirm that I have your correct text and your correct email. So whenever they want something, I want you to think to yourself, I know this is a little strange, but I want you to think to yourself, do I have all the data that I want from this person at this moment? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> because if you're missing a cell phone, or you're not sure if this is a cell phone, get it. If you're missing an email address, ask for it, right? So if there's something you're missing, try to use that piece as the method to which you'll give them what they want. So if they want a lender, then say, great, I can email you a lender. What's the best email for you? And you say email because you ain't got their email. And if you had their email, you could be better at communicating with them. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so when you when somebody asks you for a vendor, whether it's a lender or a painter or a roofer or a carpenter or whatever, then you say, yes, I've got um, a, a number of relationships with with great painters. Um, do you have, do you want me to introduce you to my to my favorite or would you like a couple of names? Okay. Okay, and then if you if you have no idea who that person is. Then you just get back to the group and say, who's your favorite painter? And then you'll get a list of painters. And then these are people that have been vetted, right? Because I've got 
a really long list of HVAC companies that I don't like, and I don't have any that I do like, right? So if I get it, if I have a need for an HVAC company, I'm going to call somebody or I'm going to put it on the you know top 20 page, the ALC page or y'all, y'all's page and say, hey, who do you know? Does that make sense? Yes. So don't just pick somebody out of the phone book. Um, <laughs> Rose, they used to have this thing. It was like a book with all the names on it. It was co- that we used to call it a phone book. Just kidding. Uh, yeah, I remember those. <laughs> yeah, me too. I had one. Pick, I had one. Your fingers do the walking. Right. right. They make great don't, booster don't seats. <laughs> <laughs> We're all having fun here today. Okay. And um, so don't pick a name out of the internet, right? Go in and find um, a highly recommended professional and then make that connection and make the connection in a three way, not a two way. So don't give the name to the prospect, give the name to the prospect and the refer and to the, and to the company and to the vendor. That way they can connect without you having to get involved again and they can connect with um uh with your prospect and the name and connection doesn't get lost in the shuffle Makes sense? all right everyone clear on that yes okay let me do just a tiny bit great job alma let me do a, a, a tiny bit of housekeeping and then um maybe we'll do another one of the, one or two of these at the end so don't forget that there was um I think it, she posted it publicly, so I don't think it's a problem. Kathy Ray's mother-in-law um, passed away um, yesterday, or yeah, yesterday, um, and so we postponed the twenty, uh, the thirty-six, twelve, three class because she was going to teach that today. So her class, which I believe is on farming, is going to be Friday, and everything will be just pushed off one session. So apologize for the last-minute cancellation. There will be no thirty-six, twelve, three today. Instead, it will be Friday from 1.30 to 3.30. Um, I want to recommend to everyone again that they participate in Gene Rivers' class on Thursday. Um, it is via Zoom. It is from nine o'clock to four o'clock. Gene is one of the master faculty of Keller Williams International. He's Andy's coach, um, Andy Peters' coach, probably in my opinion, and I've seen pretty much all of them. He's probably my favorite instructor of all of Keller Williams. He is phenomenal. Okay. And he's going to be teaching class on the listings clinic. Okay the entire listings process, how to increase your skills, how to secure more appointments, how to close more appointments, how to make more profit, um, and how to have fun when we're building our listings-based business. If you need, if you, um, I speak to a lot of agents and they say, well, the buyer side of the business is, is easier and I feel more comfortable doing the buyer side of the business. I gotta tell you, I kinda think that's a limiting belief, okay? There's nothing easier about the buyer side of the business. In fact, if I was to tell you, it's probably easier on the seller side of the business, okay? Um, Not to mention the fact that it is incredibly more efficient. Let's just paint this picture for a second. I have earned five listings. I got five active listings, okay? And I am going out of town. I'm going out of town. And uh, I'm going to go to the beach. And I'm going to hang out with my family on the beach. And showing time is going to set all my appointments for me. The other buyer's agents are going to go into all the houses without me having to show anyone. And then they're going to submit offers. And there's a possibility that all of those deals can be under contract by the time I get back. Okay. If I have five active buyers and I go out of town and go to the beach, ain't nothing happening until I get back. Unless I am willing to share some of the work. And of course, because I'm sharing some of the workload, then I've got to share some of the money. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying it's not as leveraged. Does that make sense? I think a well-oiled, highly efficient, highly systematized agent, highly, could probably take around 20 listings a month. Okay. There is not a single realtor on the face of the earth that can manage 20 active buyers in a month. Not a chance. Okay, you'd be hard pressed to be seven or eight of them probably. That would probably drive you insane. Okay, so um, I'm gonna encourage everybody to think about how can I become um, confident and um, systematized in the listing side of the business in 2021. I'm not saying exclusively listings, I'm just saying don't shy away from them. Okay, you control the market when you have the listings. Listings breed buyers. You know why? 
because listings breed phone calls. Make sense? John got a call yesterday. John's on, John's on, right? Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. This is the biggest group we have ever had in productivity coaching for a morning huddle. Thank you. This is phenomenal. By the way, I love being y'all's partner. This is awesome. Okay. Um, John, I think John's on the call. Oh, John was just coming in. Um, John got a call from somebody yesterday who called on a listing that hadn't been in the system in two years. Okay. And he turned that buyer inquiry into a buyer appointment that he's got this weekend. John, you just walked, you just got in, right? You're on mute. Oh yeah. What's up? Um, you don't have to go into all the detail, but basically you got a call yesterday from somebody who inquired on a piece of property that hadn't been actively listed in two years. And you, um, uh, you, you called them and you, or I think we talked for a second and, and then you called him back and booked an appointment on Saturday, didn't you? I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. He, he went by the sign. Um, the sign hadn't been taken down for a listing that ended in August of 2016. And uh, <laughs> yeah, just, I, 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 I tracked down the owner. I, uh, I, I, I got back to the uh, client and yeah, I have a buyer's appointment for, uh, for the Saturday with him. Bypassed the agent. I didn't realize how much that I forgotten from my, my real estate class bill. Cause we, we, we definitely went over the, uh, uh, acknowledgement to sell and, you know, exclusive right to sell and all of that. And I got a little mixed up there, but uh, yeah, it worked out well. Okay. So there's, there's one form. Oh, and I want to talk about the net to seller in a second. So there's one form um, that John's referring to, which is called the authorization to show authorization to sell. property. Okay. So this is a document that you would use. Uh, the primary use of this document is when you're working with a for sale by owner, right? So when a seller has listed their property with a, just a regular brokerage, um, they have agreed to pay a commission, right? And the, and the listing and the commission details are within the FMLS page, right? So uh, typically speaking, we see, we're starting to see it creep down a tiny bit. I've started to see some two and a half lately, but for the most part, it's 3% commission on the buyer side. So when you see a property that's listed by just a standard broker, you can feel confident that you're gonna get paid because a for sale by owner is not actually listed with the broker then you, you need to verify that if you bring a buyer that you would actually be compensated. So the document to verify that is something called the authorization to show unlisted property. So let's say Michael is my buyer and uh, Michael saw this for sale by owner and he says, hey, this is the one, I wanna go see it, right? You call the, the owner of that property, the owner of the FISBO and say, hi, you, know, you introduce yourself, hey, I've got a buyer that would like to see your home. I just want to verify that you were what's called protecting seller or protecting agents. Protecting agents means that there would be a commission and they'd say yes, or they would say what's protecting. And then you really know you need to help that person. Um, and you would say, and, and the commission that you're, you're paying is what? And hopefully they'll say 3%. And then you say, okay, great. I'm going to send over a document called the authorization to show unlisted property. And it details you know, Michael Gould, it details um, the commission and it details the amount of time that that would be protected for, right? For this showing on this date or something like that. Um, that is your con confirmation that uh, you would be protected if Michael wanted to pursue that property, okay? So that is the authorization to show unlisted property. Um, I don't, I'm trying to think of any other reason why you would use a document like that. Um, I, I suppose if you were facilitating a private sale, but in some respects, that's a FISBO anyway, right? They're not, they're not listed with an, with an active broker or with a broker. All right. Makes sense. All right. I'm going to just, this is not as much detail as I want to go into with this, but I'm going to give you just a, um, a, a decent overview of a net to seller sheet. Um, a couple of days ago, I posted a net to seller um, kind of template in the uh, announcements page or I think I put it post in the help page actually. Um, so when you guys are sitting down with the seller, the seller is generally gonna have, um, you know, when they're discussing price and commissions and closing costs and all this kind of stuff, that you need to make sure that they understand what all that's gonna mean on the back end. okay? So what I mean by that is if they receive X number of dollars for the sale price, and if they pay you such and such a commission, and if they agree to pay for a home warranty or some repairs or um, closing costs for the buyer or whatever, and if they have to pay off their home mortgage, 
when it's all said and done with, how much money are they walking away with? Okay, every seller needs to know that number so that they can feel comfortable agreeing to a price. Is there some, does everyone, um, I know pretty much know the answer to this, but does everyone feel comfortable going through the, that math with a, with a buyer, or I'm sorry, with a seller? What's your question you broke up, sorry. Does everyone feel comfortable going through that math with a seller or would you like to spend some more time um, becoming better at explaining to the seller what they would walk away with in a transaction? I'd like to spend some time. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna give you the, 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 um, the, the, the basic foundation, okay? So think about, first we're gonna talk about all the receivables, okay? The receivables are what is the money that the seller is going to get, is going to receive, okay? The receivable is the sales price, okay? And um, there's some prorations, which I'll get to in just a second. So then we take the sales price and we start uh, reducing that number by all the other obligations that they've agreed to pay. The first obligation is the sales commissions, right? Generally speaking, you're looking at 6%, half of which would go to the buyer's agent, half would go to the seller's agent. So let's just take $200,000, um, 6% of that is $12,000, you're left with 188, follow me? Okay, 188. The next thing we do is we reduce by any closing costs that the seller has agreed to pay. Okay, let's just say in this example, it's $5,000, okay? Um, uh, one sec. Let's say it's five thousand dollars. So now instead of one eighty-eight, you're netted at one eighty-three. Okay. Now let's say there's a home warranty. Let's just say the math. Keep the math simple. The home warranty is five hundred bucks. Okay. So now instead of one eighty-three, it's one eighty-two five. Follow me so far. Okay. The next thing we're going to pay off is the existing mortgage. If there's no mortgage, then you don't have to reduce it by anything. But let's say it's a, a mortgage of let's just say one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Now, an important piece to understand is when they log on to their, you know, mortgage, you know, internet banking thing, and it says what the mortgage amount remaining, the principal remaining, that is not the payoff. It's close, but it's not the payoff. Okay. Because what ends up happening is because we, the mortgage um, holder pays mortgage payments in arrears, meaning they're going to pay Let's say I make my payment at the first of the month, but then I sell the home on the 15th of the month. I have not yet paid the interest for the first 15 days of that month. So when they settle up with me, I'm going to have to pay the interest for those 15 days of the month. So the, the payoff of the mortgage is not the same as the existing principal balance of the mortgage. Does everyone follow that? Yes. Okay. So it, again, it's not like, it's not going to be off by thousands, but you need to let them know, hey, you know, they're, you're going to be paying interest for any days in between the last payment and the day you close. Okay. In fact, it's not even necessarily the day you close. It's the day they receive the payoff, which could be the next day or even the next day. Okay. So now we're getting kind of in the weeds here, but now you reduce by the mortgage balance, whatever the payoff is. So let's say the payoff is 150. Now you're left with, what is it? $32 and a half thousand dollars. Okay. That is, uh, um, that, that will get you 99% of the way there. Let me explain to you the other kind of things that are, need to be accounted for. Okay. The first thing that needs to be accounted for is any HOA fees. Okay. So generally, most HOA fees on condos and townhomes are paid monthly, and they're paid at the beginning of the month. So let's say the HOA fee is $200 a month. And um, so first of the month comes, they pay the $200. On the 10th of the month is when the closing is going to happen. So what's happened is the seller is paid for the entire month, yet the buyer will own the home for two-thirds of the month. So at the end of, at the closing, they will pay back the buyer it, um, for the portion of the month, I'm sorry, the buyer will pay back the seller, the seller for the portion of the month that the buyer will ultimately own the home. Okay, so two thirds of 200 is what, one, 160 or something? Is that right? No, like uh, 130 or something. 133. Right? 
133. Um, so they will pay back, the buyer will pay a proration back to the seller so that the seller will pay the HOA fees for all the days that they were there and the buyer will pay the HOA fees for all the time that they were there. If you move into a community, you, typically you see this in single family homes where let's say it's like a swim and tennis community and the HOA fees are let's say $800 for the year. More often than that, more often than not, those are paid at the very beginning of the year. So let's say they, those are paid in January and then the closing is in September, the buyer will pay back the seller for the months or really the days that the buyer owns the home, even though the seller had previously paid the whole year. Does that make sense to everybody? That's calculated on a daily basis. So per, per day, there's an allotment. So if it's $800 a year, it's, what is that? Like two and a half, two, two and a quarter dollars per, per day, something like that, okay? Now, same thing goes with taxes. Same thing goes with taxes. We'll only be like two more minutes. Um, if the tax bill was paid prior to the closing, okay, if the seller has paid the tax bill prior to the closing, then they have paid the full year taxes and the buyer at closing will give back the, like let's, that would be the case now. Most tax bills have been paid. Um, and if you have a closing in the month of December, then the buyer will pay back the seller for a credit for the, for the days or the weeks that they owned the home at the end of the year because the sellers paid the full amount. If the closing is in February, let's say, then now the tax bill has not been paid at all. And so what ends up happening is when the tax bill is due, the buyer's gonna pay the whole thing. Usually that happens in the fall. And so the seller will pay the buyer credit at closing for the first, let's say two months of the year where they were the owners. So let's, re let's reset. They take in their income, they take in the sales price, they pay the real estate commissions, they pay any concessions in the contract, things like closing costs, home warranty, and that kind of stuff. Um, then they pay off their mortgage. And then whatever's left uh, is profit. The only other things that would affect that profit are um, uh, any prorations that need to be accounted for. The two things that are primarily accounted for in prorations are taxes and HOA fees. Okay, taxes and HOA fees. One thing that you wanna make sure the seller understands is that they can't use the escrow money to settle up. Meaning they're gonna have, they're basically gonna to have to come to the table with, not come to the table with cash, but they, they will need to make the buyer whole at closing with, at, with the prorations without the benefit of the escrow money. Escrow money will be returned to them by law within 30 days of the closing. So if I'm the mortgage holder, let's say I'm Wells Fargo, I get money, I get my loan paid off. Now I know, hey, I don't, I don't have, I don't have this debt anymore, or I don't have this existing loan anymore. So now I don't need to hold this this escrow money, and I just send it back. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So after closing, a seller is generally going to get the balance of their escrow account within 30 days, but they can't use that money to settle up at the closing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's very, I mean, it's very, very commonplace that you would be asked to help a seller understand what they're going to walk away from the transaction with. That's the way you figure it out. Okay. Now, even though it's a very strong seller's market, it's very common for you to see closing costs paid for. So the stats say that closing costs are still paid for in about two thirds of the sales right now. So if you say, hey, there's a good, especially if you're on like the, let's say 300 and less, um, because it's generally going to be first time home buyers or people that don't have a ton of cash, right? Um, so they would probably ask for some closing costs to be uh, included in the transaction. Does that make sense? All right, we'll go through a little bit more detail on that in the future, but um, I wanted to make sure that you kind of understood that spreadsheet and you have a, a little bit of clarity and a, and a lot of confidence on how to walk a seller through that math. That math is also important if that seller is gonna turn around and use those proceeds as a down payment or as a portion of a down payment to move forward with their next purchase. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So Bill, that, hey, spread, Bill. that spreadsheet that you shared, um, it's, not, it's not like an Excel that does the math for you, is it? Like you can't plug in numbers and it give you a bottom line. It just, it came across as like a JPEG. Uh, that, that, that particular, I think I just took a picture of it. So it's just a JPEG. Um, I just Googled or I just went in Google and said, 
you know, um, seller net Excel or something. And okay. you can create a, I mean, you can create a, a Google spreadsheet or I could even create it, take me two minutes, um, you know, sell A, sales price, sell B, um, you right. know, mortgage amount. So, you know, and, and you know, formula, it's uh, the equation, you know, the equal sign, parentheses, sales price, you know, times 0. 0.6, 0. 0.06. Oh, you're just talking crazy talk now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm building out, I'm, I'm just explaining the formula. So you can easily set sense. that up and I'm sure you could find it online too. Okay. Thank hey, you. Jill, I have a question. Yeah. Um, if, so if we supposed to get the, the payoff amount, would you say that during the, uh, the listing consultation that we would ask them for it prior to the listing, con um, the listing presentation so that we can have it as part of a slide or what would be the appropriate time to ask for the payoff information? Uh, great question. I think that it's important to have a rough idea of what the mortgage balance is going in. Like it, it's just part of the conversation, right? So do you have a mortgage on the property? Right, you, you ever heard that line of like, so will you be paying cash for this or will you be obtaining financing? And the person's like, ooh, this person thinks I have all the cash, right? So you right. can say, you can say, um, you know, will you be, a, will you, uh, do you have a, do you currently have a mortgage on the property? And they'll say yes and say, you know, roughly speaking, do you know how much it is, right? That's good enough for now. You don't, I, I wouldn't go, the seller net sheet's not necessary to put into your presentation, right? But it would be helpful for them to understand, hey, I got a $500,000 home, I got a mortgage of 400, you know, it's going to cost me, you know, let's say 6% commissions, 1% to, to, for the little knickknack stuff, you know, inspection related things, home warranty, maybe 2% for closing costs. Um, let's just call that 9%, 9% of 500,000, 45,000. So it's going to cost, I'm going to, I have a, you know, let's say 450 to walk away with. Okay. And then I get a mortgage if, of 400. I, I haven't so I'll I walk never with asked 50. before, but I just wanted to see if this was an obstacle. You know how we talk about obstacles all the time. I wanted to see if this is an obstacle for agents to kind of ask that question to feel comfortable, or is this something that's just normal that an agent should ask um, a seller in the process? I think it's, I think you, if you don't ask, then you can't do your job. Like, mm -hmm. Our job is to be the advisor. Like I, I even think it's appropriate to ask questions like, so how, how does, you, you know, I'll, I'll give you a quick example. Like I, I had a, um, a woman, I helped her find a rental a long time ago. Then I helped her sister buy, then I helped her buy. Then she got married and I ended up inheriting her husband's property. Like, so I helped him rent it a couple of times. Then I helped him and his wife sell and buy again. And then he calls me and for like five years in a row, we kept putting a renter in this place. So every year he'd call me and say, hey, is it time to sell? No, it's time to rent. So we rent it. But next time, time to renew. What should we do? We run the numbers. It makes more sense to rent. This time he called me and I said, dude, I think it's time to sell. And here's why. And I said, I need to understand how this home fits into your entire financial picture. What are you going to do with all this money? Okay. Right. Yeah. And if I don't understand that, then I don't know if I can give sound advice, right? So don't think that you're like intruding in their privacy. If, if, if something's private, they'll tell you, but look, you're, you're the, you're, you are um, trying to choreograph this whole thing. Like, I don't see any problem asking these questions. Like, in fact, if you don't, um, you, you may be, um, you may not be educating them in the, in, in the full way you should. Well, Bill, and it's, and it's also going to save you a lot of time. My, my first buyer, I mean, I did ask him about what was left on the mortgage and a couple of other financial questions, but basically just kind of started moving him along to the knock program and what have you. And he was woefully under, underqualified, woefully yeah. underqualified. And, and I think it would have really saved me a, a heck of a lot of time and effort, but would have asked those questions up front. He was more than willing to give me the information. I just, I just should have been more, much more proactive. Yeah, I mean, the truth of the matter is, is that, um, and 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 it wasted his better. time too. It, it it was yeah, I could have really cut cut a lot of that off up front by if saying, you know, "What's your income? What what's this? What's that?" Well, you know? income, I don't. Income is generally not necessary to ask. You have a rough idea of what their income is based on what they can afford. You don't need to ask them well, what their credit score how is. How much down? How much down are you going to put down? How much you what your right. mortgage is? 
any other any other sizable debts that you have kind of thing i mean i wouldn't even go there this it is simply um i want you to speak to a lender right the lender will tell me the type of down payment that you're going to be getting the type of loan you want and the amount i don't need to know anything else now because I don't, I don't want to know your credit score. I don't want to see your social security number. I don't want any of that liability. Okay. On the seller side though, look, I need to know um, if this is even going to work out, right? We talked about short sales. Short sale would be like you sell the home for 400, but you got a debt of 450. Okay. We don't see that so much right now, but that was very commonplace 10 years ago. So if you got more debt on the home than it's worth, then I'm, I, I might not be able to get paid. So I got to figure out if this isn't a, 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 something I'm interested in going through, right? So it, there's nothing wrong with asking these questions, nothing, okay? But don't ask, don't say, what's your credit score? I need to make sure you're good enough or something. You know, these are delicate things. No, but, I wouldn't go that far, Bill. But Keep in mind that the, the average consumer, and I, I hope this doesn't offend anyone, the average consumer doesn't have a huge amount of financial literacy, right? They, they have mediocre levels of net worth for the most part, right? And they have an unimpressive amount of financial literacy. Like this may be the, you know, you're, you're their advisor on building wealth. You got to ask the questions. Make sense? All right, you guys, this was a lot of fun. Um, let me just make sure I didn't miss any, any chats. Couldn't find the video. All right, maybe Rose will post the, the link um, in, the, um, in the group a little bit later. Um, thank you guys for, for coming on in. We'll do the buyer presentation tomorrow, okay? Thank Have an you, awesome Bill. day.